Good morning, and thank you for joining me for today's information session on ICANN's Career and College Readiness Curriculum for grades 9 through 12. My name is Britannia Mori. I am the Vice President of Marketing and Communications for ICANN, as well as the lead on the ICANN curriculum team. So today I will be going through our different uh, programs and services around our Career and College Readiness Curriculum. And if you have any questions while I'm going through today's information session, please drop them into the chat and I will answer those questions as they come through. Thank you for joining me. So to give you a quick introduction on ICANN and who we are, ICANN is an education nonprofit. We are headquartered in the state of Iowa, and our mission is to empower students to find success in career, college, and life. We meet our mission each year through a variety of programs and services. We offer advising to students and families in the areas of four-year planning, career planning, college planning, financial aid, and FAFSA completion assistance. We do this virtually. We do this in our, we have several locations um, throughout the state of Iowa, and we also uh, do this through our partnerships with schools. For programming, we offer school-based seminars. Those can be uh, primarily virtual, though uh, schools in the state of Iowa can have us come in person as well. We do FAFSA completion assistance for families, and then we offer what we're going to be primarily talking about today, which is the career and college readiness curriculum. We also offer a variety of professional services, such as consulting around district career and academic planning, how to help with ICAP, uh, individual requirement satisfaction, so for those student individual career and academic plans. We also do work with some districts who want to integrate our curriculum into their career information system. So we have worked with schools on that as well. And then we offer professional development for school counselors, educators, college access professionals, as well as higher educational professionals uh, within admissions and financial aid in the areas of career and college readiness. Jumping right into today's topic of our ICANN curriculum program, we offer um, this curriculum through age and grade specific lessons that are designed to guide students through each step of the planning process uh, for life after high school. Each of our lessons builds upon the previous lesson. So some of them will have prerequisites, but they all lead towards um, helping students make critical decisions for life after graduation. Each lesson provides the students with guidance, activities, and resources. These lessons are not sit and get. The students are engaged and they are doing something. They may be, may be engaged in a classroom or a small group discussion. There may be small group or partner work. There may be individual research and uh, self-reflection and personalized planning activities, but they're always doing something. They shouldn't just be sitting and listening in these lessons. And our program is built upon national standards, as well as the ASCA model mindsets and behaviors for career and college readiness. We have based our curriculum on the Educational Policy Improvement Center, the national uh, think tanks. So students who graduate high school and are considered career and college ready have key cognitive strategies. They know key content knowledge um, around their transition skills, their, their interests and their values. They understand different options in career, in college, in, in preparing for the workforce. They have key transition skills. They're going to be aware of post-secondary uh, choices and costs. They're going to understand how things move through high school into college, how you complete a high school diploma, how you, how you complete a degree or a program. You're going to have, they're going to have career awareness um, and they're going to be able to self-advocate. And then they're also going to understand their key learning skills and techniques that give them a primary role in making those uh, informed decisions for postgraduate life. As I mentioned, we also have aligned our curriculum with the ASCA model for student uh, standards. So the mindsets and behaviors for student success for K-12 college career and life readiness. Um, we understand the need for programs to fit into your professional uh, competencies. So we have done that alignment. We are actually in the process of updating this alignment to match the fourth edition of the ASCA model. In terms of how our curriculum is implemented, we have designed this to integrate career and college readiness concepts into the classroom. And we have designed it to be incredibly flexible, which I will illustrate to you as we get to the implementation guide here in a few minutes. Uh, but we have designed these lessons so you can pick and choose 
the order, the content, the grade level, the depth in which you go into discussion. You can pick and choose or you can utilize the entire program. We do have a best practices scope and sequence. Again, I will show you that in our implementation guide. Um, but from flexibility, we understand that no, no two schools are exactly the same and that you may need, uh, for one school, you may be implementing this as a standalone course and it can work, as, it, it can work in that way. Um, some schools may be utilizing this as a push-in to certain courses throughout the year. You may have 45 minutes once a week or once a month. We can work with you that way. We also have schools that use this as a homeroom or advisory period, which means you don't have a full class period. You have maybe 20, 15 or 20 minutes within a 30 minute advisory period. So we have um, adapted those lessons to fit that scenario as well. So the flexibility and adaptability of this curriculum really can meet your needs, whether you're big or small, whether you have a full class period or certain times of the week, we can help you implement this curriculum to meet your needs and the needs of your students. Uh, we also, that comes with our full support. So when we're helping you do this, you can know that at any point in time when you're utilizing this curriculum, the ICANN curriculum team is right behind you. Just a phone call away, a Zoom meeting away. Um, we can help you with implementation ideas. We can talk you through lessons. We can help you better understand resources or materials or just brainstorm with you um, on how to engage your students in the most productive way. Our curriculum covers four topic areas academic preparation, career exploration, financial literacy, and then post-secondary selection. In our academic preparation segment, you are going to find six lesson topics. So we start off um, with academic prep. We go through an activities resume, studying um, the impact of social media. This is where our digital citizenship lesson falls, and then also effective communication. In these academic focused preparation lessons, our core concepts really talk to students about how can they relate what they're doing every day, their academics, to their post high school opportunities? So that when you get those questions in class about how am I ever going to use this? How does, why, what does, the, why does this mean anything? Why is this important? Um, we want to help them understand how classes are important, how their academics are important. Um, we also roll in the impact of academic planning on their future opportunities and options the importance uh, and the role of extracurricular and non-academic activities, how those can help with admissions applications, with building skill sets, uh, with scholarship opportunities, building awareness of their social profile, and also how that can impact future opportunities, understanding proper communications, text speak versus a formal email versus a formal letter, um, even how you address people face-to-face. -face. And then uh, our digital citizenship lesson covers identity theft protection and online safety. Our second segment of lessons is career exploration. So we have six lessons here that really focus in on pathways and all of the variety of careers that students may not know exist. We really want students to understand the full plethora of uh, lessons or of careers that they can study and how best to prepare for those. So our career core concepts, we have pathways, instead of a singular career goal. We want students to take their assessments, find career pathways that fit their interests and, and values and skill sets, and then explore a variety of careers before honing in on a single one. We want them not only to cross things off their list, but also find, uh, find th multiple things that may interest them so they can explore. Uh, then we want to integrate that into their course planning. So how can they make their four-year plan not only help them graduate from high school, but best prepare them for that next step, whatever it may be, career exploration, building skill sets, um, admission uh, requirements as well. We want them to find the right fit for their career. So that means their social fit, their academic fit, values and interests. Uh, we really help them dig into their career assessment results and make it personal. We explore all of those different pathways. There are 16 career pathways, uh, and we want to help them uh, really understand how careers are lumped together, how they're related to one another, how you can uh, score very high in health sciences without having to become a doctor and go to school for eight or, or 10 years or however long it may take for their particular specialty. Uh, we want them to understand you can go into health sciences with a one or two year degree um, because there are so many jobs available and such a wide variety within each pathway. We really want them to have a knowledge and understanding of all of their post high school options. 
uh, whether it's a diploma, a certificate, a two-year degree from a community college, a four-year degree or beyond, or it might be a registered apprenticeship or career training. Uh, we really explore all of those options. Our third segment of lessons is all about financial literacy. So you can see there are seven topic areas here, everything from basic budgeting and borrowing, understanding credit. We do talk about financial aid and budget scenarios, um, understanding student debt and student loans. In our financial literacy area of core concepts, we want students to understand how to do a basic budget, needs versus wants, income, expenses, uh, things like that. We want them to be able to build a budget so that they can understand how to create budget expectations and planning for the future around an education or training program, how much something might cost and how that relates to their career. Uh, we have a lesson on the 1040 income tax process as it relates to financial aid and the FAFSA form. Um, we want them to instinctually understand through these lessons that when they think about a career and they think about education or training, that they are linking what the career potential is with how much is responsible in terms of how much to pay for that training or that education. Um, having them have a responsible understanding of student debt. Uh, how to understand college financial aid packages. When you get letters from colleges, they do not look the same. How do you compare them? Um, we teach, there's a lesson that teaches students how to do that. Understanding how credit factors into life decisions and how, um, how important it is to start making good decisions, financial decisions from the beginning understanding the student loan process, and then also defining and understanding all types of loans and loan terminology so that they are prepared uh, for the decisions that they may be making as a 17 or 18 year old senior in terms of taking out loans for school or for a car or anything else like that. Our final section of lessons is our post-secondary selection. Again, we have seven topic areas here that we cover. Everything from comparing those education and training options, uh, the basics of college, uh, College 101, it really gets into the structure of a campus and the support things that are there. Um, understanding a return on the investment you're putting into a different career area, scholarships, the application process, and then comparing uh, programs of study and building degrees. Our core concepts here, we want them to explore all of their post-secondary options, not just college. So through these lessons, we pick up where we, where we were in the career exploration uh, segment of lessons. And now we're saying, how do you get there? What are all of your options? And what is the right fit in terms of academics, career, and financial? We want them to understand and think about picking a education or training program based on career potential. Uh, the scholarship lesson covers not just the search and letters of recommendation, but they actually come out with a personal statement essay that they've written that they can then use uh, for their scholarship applications. The how to apply lesson covers not only admissions, but apprenticeship applications, job applications, um, really any application that they may be filling out, students can, can understand and better prepare through this lesson. Um, and then we have just the basic understandings of the types of post-secondary institutions, the types of career training, um, those campus support systems. Uh, we're eliminating barriers here. If a student uh, is unfamiliar with, with collegiate terms, they may feel uncomfortable or unprepared and see that as a barrier to attending. So we want to explain to them that there is support on campus. What is a registrar? That you have an academic advisor and what that means. Um, that there's tutoring and career centers and all of those different support systems. We want students to understand um, a college campus is more than just a classroom. There is a built-in support structure to help them succeed. And then we have two lessons. One, teaches students how to compare programs of study between colleges and at different levels. And then uh, college course planning teaches them how to understand the makings of a degree. What is general education? What is a major or a minor? How do those courses build a degree? Um, how do you build different degrees? What does a one-year degree look like? What does a two-year degree look like? What does a four-year degree look like? Um, so we teach students through these lessons. Uh, we always, you know, in a general advisement, uh, students are told, be sure to compare colleges, pick the right program for you. But what does that mean? We have a lesson that teaches them what that means and how to, how to effectively compare colleges to make the right choice or the best choice for them. Um, all of this curriculum builds into helping students have a solid individual career and academic plan. So we are fulfilling uh, those ICAP standards. 
we can, you, you can use this curriculum as a standalone career and college readiness program, or you can, if you have a designated career information system, such as Naviance or Zello or School Links, you can use this program to supplement um, whatever that career information system is and take your students into a more engaged and deeper conversation. Uh, our program can be applied to all five of the essential component requirements of an individual career and academic plan. And again, allows for that more in-depth student engagement. So those five essential components, self-understanding, career information, career exploration, post-secondary exploration, and then career and post-secondary decisions, uh, all of our lessons hit on at least one of those five components. Uh, most often our, our lessons are hitting on at least two of those at a time. In terms of those career information systems, um, we provide you with the ability to expand uh, within your system. We can also, uh, we have worked with schools who use Google Classroom and Zello to convert our curriculum into a virtual format within that career information system. So for students, it all looks like it's one system. Uh, so that's something that uh, we also offer as an option. And in terms of giving you an example of that ICAP enrichment, so career information systems, you know, they'll have you do a career assessment with a student. Uh, if you pair that with the ICANN program, we have a worksheet that takes students deeper into their assessment results and helps them connect, helps guide them through um, how to observe and really assess uh, what those results look like. Typically, you might save three careers as a student, just oh, pick three careers that, that popped out of that assessment, you write those down and, and you've completed the activity. Um, we're gonna help students relate those careers to their interests. We're gonna help students connect those careers with potential coursework in high school, as well as recommended extracurricular activities. And then what post-secondary training or education do they need um, to get to those careers, to meet those, those uh, hiring requirements? And then we're helping students explore career clusters and pathways rather than individual careers. Um, so through our program, we are not limiting students to, okay, pick a, pick a career uh, based on your assessment and study that. We want students to explore and learn about pathways of interest and how to relate and integrate those into their four-year plan so they can hone in on a singular career maybe by senior year or have a definite idea of a career pathway they're going to explore when they get to college. But we, we really, push back on the idea of students picking a single career really early on in high school. We want them to spend their high school exploring, ruling out things because um, they're using those, those experiences to really explore those options. We do tailor our program by state. So our national program, uh, we provide any school that, that decides to license our curriculum with a kickoff questionnaire. Um, that helps us identify any specific changes in the curriculum that they may want to see or specific programs that they already reference that they want integrated. Um, any example that we utilize in our curriculum reflects programs or institutions within your state that students would uh, be familiar with or um, that they would recognize. So if you are a school in Colorado or California or Virginia, um, when we get into uh, comparing programs of study or things like that, your examples aren't going to be schools in Iowa. They're going to be schools in your state. Um, and then after you get the curriculum, if, if you notice additional things that weren't originally outlined that you want to see, um, you work with the curriculum support team and then we can continue to finesse that curriculum to make sure it's meeting exactly the needs uh, that you want. So currently, um, if the state is in purple, we have tailored the curriculum to that state already. Uh, that still means that you're going to get your your um, your questionnaire, though, in case there's something that, you know, northern Colorado might feel differently than southern Colorado or want a different um, something else added in there. So we're currently also working with schools in Virginia and American Samoa to uh, continue tailoring that process. And uh, we have some schools in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Missouri that are also um, looking into that tailoring process. So we continue to expand. Um, the tailoring process does not take um, a long time. So if you don't see your state in purple here, don't feel like uh, that would delay your ability to use the curriculum. Um, because once we have your interest and your, your license agreement, um, while you're getting in the process of getting ready to be trained and, and get every, getting everything set up, 
we then tailor the curriculum. So it it doesn't take us a lot of uh, a lot of time to to get that done. Here in the state of Iowa, again, where we are headquartered, and this is just kind of a zoom in look. Every county here in the state of Iowa that's orange um, has a school that's utilizing our curriculum. We are a rural state. Uh, but we do have um, all our urban areas, Polk and Lynn County hold our two largest school districts, um, one of which already uses our curriculum and the other is uh, on track for uh, starting up next fall. Uh, and I mentioned earlier the implementation guide. I am going to switch my screen over and show you our implementation guide so that you can. Uh, there's just a few things in here I want you to see. So. <clears throat> When you license the curriculum, you get access to our curriculum portal, which is where you are gonna go in and access all of the pieces and parts to the curriculum. And in here, you'll see there is a link to the implementation guide. So our implementation guide, blow it up here just a little bit. You can see here in our table of contents, um, there is a wide variety of information about career and college readiness, um, the ICAP plans, how you can integrate the key elements of the curriculum, uh, there's a lot of information in this guide that will help you implement and move forward with um, your career and college readiness program goals in your school through our program. Uh, the couple of spots I want to focus on. Mentioned earlier, a scope and sequence. The lessons are completely flexible. You can build your own scope and sequence, but um, we do have a guide in case you want to say, okay, this is how this is how I should do it the first year, and then I'll get to know the curriculum and make changes after. Um, so we do have a scope and sequence by grade level, and it goes by quarter and shows you which lessons we would recommend with each grade. And then we've also included supplemental activities and times where, you know, okay, you're going to meet with your counselor um, to see how things are going. Here, we're gonna do a freshman transition seminar. It's an orientation kind of um, engagement activity that brings parents into the conversation. Um, so you can see, again, um, revise those four-year plans for scheduling for next year. Sophomore year, again, lessons by quarter, quarterly meetings with the counselor. Um, again, that review, revise your four-year plan ahead of scheduling for next year. Um, here we have a supplemental activity, uh, potentially starting a job shadow, career and college planning presentation to, again, engage, engage students and parents together in the planning process. 11th grade, we're doing uh, by quarter. Now we're going to start getting into more of the heavy financial literacy lessons. As the students get older, we're preparing for financial aid. We're exploring apprenticeships. We're starting to compare those um, education and training programs. Spring of senior uh, junior year, this is where we're, you know, start going to a career or college fair. Have you done a job shadow? Are you doing campus visits? Uh, and then by the end of junior year, engaging parents and preparing them for the financial aid process next fall. And then we have senior year. So we have more lessons by quarter. Um, those final campus visits would be a recommended supplemental activity along with the college application campaign. Second quarter, uh, hopefully the FAFSA will reopen on October 1st going forward. Um, so hosting a FAFSA completion assistance event or providing information to your seniors about how to do that. Uh, scholarship events. Third quarter, student debt reality is our lesson that explains financial aid packages, how to compare them, how to um, understand the decisions you're making. By the end of the year, we're celebrating decisions. We've got some understanding student loans and things like that. Um, so that's our scope and sequence. Again, this is just a suggestion. You can implement this any way you want. Um, but then the second section I want to share, that lesson customization. I've talked about the flexibility. So all of our lessons are designed. You can do the whole activities resume lesson in 45 minutes, or you can break it down. Um, so I mentioned that some schools do this in an advisory or homeroom period. So it might be a 30 minute period, which means they have 15 to 20 minutes of solid learning time with students. So we have broken down every lesson into a segment that can be done in 15 minutes. So the activities resume could be three advisory periods and all of the content is broken down into, okay, this section could be done in 15 minutes, this section could be done in 15 minutes, and this section could be done in 15 minutes. Um, but what we've also done 
is it's not necessarily that it will only take you 15 minutes. Those are the natural breaks in the content of that lesson. So you could do down here in study skills, you see we've broken down a 45 minute lesson into six 15 minute segments. Well, more that's uh, more than 45 minutes. So what you can do is say, I have 45 minutes, but I really think my students need more time on the time management segment. So I'm going to do, uh, yes, uh, Mike, I see your chat. This is being recorded and uh, you can you can watch it from the beginning. I will send, out, send that out at the end. Uh, so yes, it is recorded to answer your question. So you can do each of these segments. You could do them in 15 minutes or you could say, I'm gonna do segment one for a whole class period. And uh, instead of doing one class period on effective study skills, I'm actually going to spend a whole week on effective study skills. And I'm going to take each segment and make that a class period so that we can spend more time in discussion or in the activity, um, really digging into some of those conversations. Um, that's the same with, if we go down here to, you know, academic preparation. You could do one class period just on helping students really understand grade point average, how it's calculated, how they can calculate their own, um, the, like the difference between your semester GPA and your cumulative GPA. Um, and then you can dig in the next day to, okay, yesterday we spent our class period calculating GPAs and understanding how each of your classes creates a grade, which creates a uh, numerical evaluation, which then creates your grade point average. Today, we're gonna talk about what that GPA is used for and admission requirements. And we're gonna go through all of the different ways that you can build up your GPA uh, to improve those admission requirements. So you can, you can see how now doing that will create more discussion. So like you can see in this, the activity is segment four, but discussion, as long as it's discussion and not lecture and students are engaged in that conversation and in that back and forth, or they're working together and partners on that calculation, um, this remains a very engaging conversation. This remains a very engaging lesson. Um, but so we have broken down all of those lessons into these segments so that you can really see uh, how that works. And Back to the portal, when you're doing implementation, if you pick your lessons, uh, you can click on any of the images that you'd want, and that's the lesson you're gonna go to. So we've been talking about study skills, so we'll go to that one. So every lesson, this is where you're downloading your goals, your timeline, your PowerPoint, your handouts. Um, and then if you choose to use our true-false true, assessment, it's a pre and post. What did they know before the lesson? What did they know after the lesson? And you just compare. Um, every lesson, has a goal sheet that looks like this. And it's going to tell you what grades we would recommend if we recommend any other lessons as a prerequisite. What is the goal? What are they learning? What are the in-class activities? And what are the takeaways? Every single one of our lessons has a goal sheet. And uh, that gives you the summary or overview of the lesson. And then every lesson has a timeline. So this is your guidance. So the first page is going to be, what does this lesson look like in 45 to 50 minutes? And you're gonna see, we've timed it out. So you're gonna spend this many minutes on this section and this many minutes on this section. But then after that, if you're doing the 15 minute segment version instead, we have outlined that for you. So segment one, you're using slides one through eight. Here's your introduction. Uh, here's what you're gonna do with these students. Next day, sec segment two, slides nine through 15. Here's what you're gonna talk about on each slide. You're gonna use the questions on slide 15 to open up that dialogue and have those conversations. Segment three, 16 through 21 slides. Here's your tips and strategies for each slide. So you can see that we have it broken down and we guide you through how to do each of these segments. And we have this timeline is set up for every single lesson. Um, in both a standard and then those 15 minute segments. I'm gonna show you one of our worksheets as an example. All of the worksheets 
in our curriculum can be used as fillable PDFs. You don't have to print anything if you don't want to. You can simply download them from the portal and then assign them through a system you may have, Google Classroom, Schoology, uh, Canva, all that stuff. You can use your own system if you want. You can also um, print them and hand them out if you want to. So our career assessment lesson, this is our worksheet that all students will get. The front side of the worksheet just explains the importance of a career assessment, the different career cluster areas, um, how you relate this to education and training. The back side is where we start getting personal with students and we um, help them personalize these activities. So it's not just this generic, this is a career assessment. This is how they learn and, and personally uh, understand how it impacts them. So they're gonna follow this worksheet and go through their career assessment results. What are the career areas or pathways um, that the, the, this is highlighted for you. Oh, well, health science. And then there was some data filing or computer tech stuff. Um, but then I also had some like human services in there. And then it's gonna tell them, okay, well, what potential majors did it relate those to? And so then they can type those in. What were the starting salaries connected to some of those career areas? And then what were the skills? So if it was a certain occupation that popped up that you were interested in, what were the credentials? And what were those soft skills that you maybe needed? Did it, did it say people in this career need to be, be able to work independently or be group thinkers or have teamwork and leadership, time management? Like what are the other skills that your assessment results kind of told you you should have? And by having students write this down and collect this information, it helps them understand what they should be building in high school. Well, I'm not very good with technology, but it's but it said my interests were could be in technology. So maybe I should take typing or computers or something in high school to kind of learn. Do I really like this? Is this something I might want to do? On um, the health sciences, maybe I should take a health class uh, beyond the the one required that I have to take as a graduation requirement. Um, maybe there's an extracurricular activity I can join that will give me leadership skills. Uh, and then it has a take home assignment uh, where they would interview a trusted adult about their own career. And so it starts connecting the dots both in school and out of school, how people make these decisions, things that they should be thinking about, things like that. So our curriculum portal is where you're going to find all of this information. In here, we include any time there is uh, some sort of technology or computer uh, internet tool. We provide training videos on how to do that. None of them are complicated. Most of them just, it's a, it's a quick walkthrough so that you understand um, the different segments. So for career assessments, we have two versions of this lesson. We have the lesson in which you would use your own school career systems assessment. Um, but then when we're advising students at ICANN, we actually use the My ACT assessment tool. Um, and so we have a version of the lesson. If you don't have an assessment that you like, you can use the My ACT. It is a free tool. Students do have to sign up uh, on the My ACT website, but it's the same sign up they would use when they go to take the ACT test. Um, so really, um, it's a, it, they're, they're setting up an account they will probably need anyway. Uh, but it's free. You can set up a counselor account and actually have your students link your accounts together so you can see uh, what they're doing. And so we have these, we've set up these videos on how to do the account setup, how the assessments work, and then how to explore the assessment results. Um, so, and we do this for any, any lesson that has an online tool or resource that students might use. So I'm going to pause for a second. And if anyone has seen uh, a lesson topic that they would like to kind of see what that lesson looks like, feel free to drop it in the chat or any other questions you might have. Um, and I would be happy to show you some samples of the lessons. And if you don't have any specific ideas, then I'll just open up some of my favorite and show you a couple pieces. While you're thinking, the one I do wanna show you, I'm gonna show you the college course planning PowerPoint, um, just because this is a great example of uh, how we tailor. So this is the PowerPoint that you would get. And it opens with, you know, orientation, videos and things, understanding college credit. And then we get into the first discussion. And then activity is 
helping students understand general education courses. And the first example, so this is the Iowa version of college course planning. So we link to the University of Iowa or the University of Northern Iowa's general education requirements, their liberal arts core. Now, if you're in Texas, for example, then this would not be the University of Northern Iowa. It would be one of the uh, state universities in Texas, and the link would go to your state's general education requirements. Um, so in this lesson, you're going to, the links are always live in the PowerPoint. So you just pull them right up and you can discuss with your class um, that uh, this is what this university requires for general education requirements. Um, and you just kind of go over what that might look like with students as an introduction. And then the activity is for them, for them or to work individually or with a partner to go through a school's liberal arts core. And you could give them the two examples that are in the PowerPoint or to make it more personal. Uh, if you're working with an older student or a student who's just set on this is where I wanna go, you have them go to the school that they're interested in and uh, do the activity and make it personal. And they will have this worksheet where they write it down. So what are their goals? What program are they looking at? And then this is the general education requirements that are required at that school. This is how many classes or the class area and how many credits you'd be required to do in you know, humanities or science or math. How many credits do you have to pick from? And so while they're going through that, uh, they have this worksheet that will guide them through. Once the general education activity is done, the next segment of this lesson is talking about majors. So how do you build a four-year degree? And then we give some examples. So this is elementary education at William Penn. This is uh, business administration and economics at Simpson College, four-year private school. Uh, and then this is a four-year plan for biology and biomedical at UNI. So again, you can click on these examples and show students through discussion um, what questions do you have about what courses are required to major in something? What does that look like? Then you can talk about community colleges and we give you different examples. So this is an Associate of Applied Science degree from in agribusiness. This is a diploma for medical assistance. And this is a certificate in web design. So you're gonna show them the three different options at a community college. So the two-year degree, the one-year diploma, the nine-month certificate. Um, so they get examples. Once you're sure that they understand um, the difference between gen ed and all that good stuff. Um, then they go back to their worksheet and you send them back out for investigating their own major course requirements. So what are they interested in? Go explore or use the examples in the PowerPoint. Go explore and write down, you know, some of the courses and the credits and what you would have to do to, to major in that. And then if you really want to, then you can say, okay, now go build your degree. If it's a one-year program, it may be pretty much built for them or a two-year um, like career technical education programs are pretty set and you're going to take this then, but there are always electives. Or this semester, you're going to take these program courses, but then you have two electives in humanities that you have to pick. So they can see where their choices would be and where you know it's more structured for them already. So they could do year one, year two, year three, or year four, however many years they're looking at for the, the uh, course that they're looking at. The PowerPoint then does go into um, how to transfer uh, and we give some examples. So we have some two plus two programs. Um, so this is how you would transfer from you know, Des Moines Area Community College to the University of Iowa or from Western Iowa Tech to Iowa State. And again, all of these examples are tailored to your state. So um, these would all be referenced to programs within your state at schools within your state. But so that's a great example of one of our lessons that is, is part of the, the tailoring process. Um, the lesson just sums up with, um, again, all the supports on campus re-emphasizing students aren't uh, left alone in that process. So. Um, I do want to show one more part of the implementation guide, and then I will get to the counselor question. I have seen that in the chat. Uh, so the very end of our implementation guide, 
just trying to get to the beginning of the section. All right, so every state is a little bit different in your requirements or in every district even on what you're sharing with the public. And, you know, there are a lot of states now requiring schools, of course you would know this, um, what, what is involved in your curriculum? What is the source? What can you share? We have done that for you in our curriculum. There is a whole section at the bottom of the, or the end of the implementation guide that goes lesson by lesson and says, these are the resources that are in this lesson. This is where we got them from. And so if it's not something that we specifically wrote um, and we're referencing a YouTube video or we're referencing statistics from a certain place, um, you're gonna see that. So the Defining Career and Technical Education lesson, no matter what state you're in, these first bulleted uh, points are going to be the resources referenced in that lesson. And then after that, it's tailored by state. So you can see um, Colorado, we're using the Colorado Community College System and College Links um, to these programs at Colorado State, Community College of Denver, Red Rocks, and uh, Pueblo. In Georgia, we're using the Georgia College of Nursing, uh, University of Georgia Mechanical Engineering. So you can see this is part of that tailoring process. I'm gonna switch back over to my PowerPoint. Um, so I see the question is, my counselor is very interested, how does this mesh with Zello? Um, Zello is actually um, one of the systems that we have the most experience with uh, implementing. So uh, my cohort in the curriculum uh, support group, her name is Carrie, she's not on the call today, um, but she is a previous school counselor and in her school, she they were a Zello school and she fully implemented our curriculum into Zello uh, prior to joining our team. So it meshes very well with Zello. Um, I have faith that we, will, we can mesh with uh, most career information systems in some way, shape or form, but Zello, we have uh, done that with several schools. Um, so it's fully integratable into Zello, and we would be happy to uh, talk about how to do that with you and your, your counseling team. So, so those are some examples of our curriculum lessons, and now I'm going to move on a little bit to our licensing options. So there are a couple different ways to license our program. You can license our standard curriculum, which is everything I've talked about today, all of the lessons and the support and the training, all that good stuff. Um, and then there are some add-on options that you can do. And then if you really want to dig in, we do have the consulting option for your district for an academic uh, planning process. So that standard license, again, is the full curriculum program. Uh, we provide implementation training on how to integrate career and college readiness into the school counseling program, but also into your building or district to create that, that going culture. Uh, the online portal that I showed you with all of the lesson plans and the slide decks and the worksheets, um, the tailoring. We get the on-demand virtual training and then the uh, you get a hard copy of the curriculum manual if you choose. Not everyone wants a paper copy, but you can opt for the manual if you'd like it. Uh, and then full ongoing support from our team. The training uh, the implementation training, we go over the concepts of the, less, of the lessons and how to integrate those concepts, how to bring parents in, creating that culture. And then we go over all of the technology, everything in the online portal, uh, and then how to build that support structure. We don't teach you each individual lesson. We teach you the concepts behind the lessons and all of the technology. And then if you have additional questions, of course, we'll dig in. Um, but most, I mean, educators are our trained teachers. So we don't want to teach you how to teach. We want to go over the concepts of what you're teaching. Um, so your options for training, we have set training dates throughout the year and your license includes attending those set dates. Um, however, we do have building wide training where you can pick your own date and the training is specifically just for your school or your district. Um, as many people can come to that as you want. Um, and then it does provide the opportunity for it to be a little more tailored to you, um, but there is an additional fee if you want your own standalone date. The plus options, so the base uh, curriculum plus includes uh, school-based or virtual seminars to integrate uh, and engage your parents in this process. 
So they're provided in the evening for parents. Um, the virtual seminars provide the at-home engagement and the topics can include freshman transitions. So that um, kind of orientation into high school idea, uh, a guide to career and college planning, and then how to pay for college, understanding the financial aid process. Um, beyond that uh, basic, then you can have some additional add-ons like the career information system integration. Um, we do have a parent communication resource um, that's part of the, the plus options. We can add on FAFSA completion assistance events. Uh, we do provide assistance uh, helping senior families complete the FAFSA form. Uh, we do that very well virtually as well as um, depending on your distance uh, in person. We do offer professional development. So we can, if there are specific topics within the curriculum that you want more specified training on, uh, we can do advanced training as professional development on career and college readiness topics and advising. And then we do that DCAP and ICAP consulting. Uh, so what that looks like is we can evaluate your current plan if you have one. If you don't have a plan yet, we can help you survey um, to determine the elements that you need to develop for your plan. And then the work sessions would uh, outline your goals around this, develop metrics, and then establish the components of your plan. And then we would help you outline how you're going to implement it and do staff training. Or you could add on having us help you with that implementation and do the staff training uh, with you. So our license options, that standard license is $2,000 for the first year. We do licensing on an annual basis. Um, renewal is uh, less than the first year. Currently the renewal rate is $1,000 uh, for the second year. The curriculum plus base fee, which includes the curriculum program, the virtual seminars, and the parent communications resource is $3,000 for the first year, and the renewal is $2,000 um, for each additional year. Your renewals include all of the updates. We refine and review all of our lessons every single year, um, sometimes mid-year if something significant has changed, um, and then the content is updated. So that is, that is what's included in the renewal fee. Um, and that continues your access to that online portal and to the continued support and things like that. Um, those additional options, these are where we start tailoring uh, the, the licensing agreement to your school. So we would talk through um, what you're looking for and, uh, and then develop a plan that's specific for your school uh, for any of the additional curriculum plus options that are listed there on the screen. Um, some funding options. So I, I covered this slide just because I get these questions. So I wanna just talk you through that. Um, you can always, of course, use your traditional curriculum funding. Uh, you can, if you qualify for Perkins 5 funds, this is a qualified expense. Perkins 5 is, um, it's when, when your school qualifies for it, uh, if it's something that you have access to, it's, it's funds that are geared specifically for career and technical education. Um, to help students be more aware. And uh, the career planning aspects of our curriculum qualify as a Perkins 5 expense. So if you do have Perkins 5 funding and you have a balance or something like that, that could be an option uh, for you. Typically we find that the career and technical education coordinator um, is the one that kind of knows about the budget and where things are uh, in a school. That's not always the case. You may have it set up differently, but um, Sometimes that's that's where I would recommend starting if you've never if you don't know about Perkins Five. Um, this can also be a professional development expense because we do there is a large uh, training component. Uh, we've had schools use their district foundation or apply for community grants as well. So we're happy to talk through uh, your funding options and how we need to uh, set up that license if you're using it for you know professional development versus curriculum versus something else. We're happy to talk and work with you on that. Um, upcoming virtual training dates, clearly March 21st has passed. Uh, we do have one coming up in April. I will be scheduling um, some dates in May uh, as well, or again, you can schedule your own training date. Um, I tend to, to schedule those uh, as I know there's going to be need. And as we move closer to May, I will, I will set a date. So your next steps, if you're interested in learning more about our curriculum program and how it can specifically uh, help you with your district, 
or you're building career and college readiness program goals, uh, you can simply reach out to me. Uh, I'm putting some links here in the chat. The first link is if you just want to jump on my calendar and schedule a time to talk, you can use the Calendly link. If you want to, um, you can also fill out the curriculum information form, um, which will just tell me where you're at, uh, a little bit about your school, uh, and then it's going to give you that Calendly link as well. Uh, but I'm happy to stay on and answer any questions. That ends the formal time that I have for the information session in terms of information, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, you can drop them in the chat or, you know, go ahead and, and click those links and uh, set up a time where we can talk specifically about your school and how we can help you meet your goals. Thank you again for joining me today, and I look forward to uh, hearing from you guys. Okay, not seeing any additional questions, I am going to end the webinar, but again, I will send out the recording and uh, the links are, are there. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to me and I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day. Sounds great, Mike. I'll talk to you soon.